What is going on guys? Welcome to Greggles TV. This is going to be a review of the OnePlus 11 and things I like and don't like about this phone. And there's definitely, it's, it's a really nice phone, but there's almost equal parts to things I like and don't like about it. And you'll see what I mean by that. Some things are kind of big, some things aren't that big. So without further ado, let's start off with the things that I don't like about this phone. The first being the balance slash weight of this phone. Now it's not an overly heavy phone, but what I mean by balance is you have this big hunk of junk camera on here. And when you hold it, you can really feel a lot of the weight on the top half back of this phone. And it kind of, adds a little bit of fatigue to it. And it's one of the things I really don't like about this phone. I've never had that issue that I can remember where I could really feel a ton of weight on the top half of the, the, the phone and it really made a difference in terms of its comfort in terms of using it and holding it. Um, I, obviously there's nothing they can really do. It's, you can really feel, especially when you have a, uh, when you're just holding it naked, um, I, I don't know. There's just, it's, it's kind of a turnoff to me, honestly. So it'd be definitely the first thing that kind of bugs me is like the, the balance weight of this is a little bit awkward because there's so much weight in the top half of the back of the phone. Number two is the fingerprint sensor. Now I can get it to work. Don't get me wrong, but there's been times more often than not, and you might not have this issue where I really have to press it down on there. I haven't had that issue with, for instance, Samsung's newest fingerprint sensor on their S23 Ultra. Now it's a much more expensive phone, but I also haven't had that issue on the new Pixel phones either. This one, it's more accurate than not, don't get me wrong, but it's something that I don't absolutely love about it. So I had to put it down as one of the things that I don't like about it is the full on accuracy of it. Sometimes it comes into play or it gets a little bit annoying for me personally. Number three is, and this one's actually really surprising to me, is that they still use 1080p video on the front of this phone. I don't know why. I mean, obviously it's a cost cutting measure, but I can't imagine it's that much more expensive to put 4K on the front camera than it is. I mean, you have 4K on the back, don't get me wrong, but you still only have 1080p on the front. That's a big disappointment. This is basically their flagship phone, I, th I think, for this year, and they still are only putting a 1080p camera in there. 4K cameras have been out for years and years and years, and they still put 1080p. Uh, it doesn't come out that great. The video's not that great, so I don't know. It, it's, it's disappointing. This is gonna be a preference thing, and it is that the display the, the display for me isn't all that bright. Now, this kind of goes into Pixel territory where I feel like Pixel doesn't really have bright displays either unless you turn it all the way up and it consumes a lot of battery. And I currently have it on, and, and in the camera it looks good, don't get me wrong, but looking at this, this is for me personally not bright enough. I personally have to have it to about almost 70% to be like, okay, that looks good to me. That's a good brightness to me. Um, so to me, the display is not bright enough, but that's totally going to be um, subjective to everybody. I can see that. Some people always have their their displays really dim and they want it always dim. So, But for me personally, I want it to be brighter. This isn't a huge deal to me, but I thought about it and I thought, you know, people should know about this. It's gonna be a turn off. No wireless charging with this phone. If you love to wireless charge, you don't get that feature with the OnePlus 11. Now, now, it comes into consideration that it's probably a cost-cutting measure because this phone is so reasonably priced, especially for everything that you get. Um, but it's definitely going to be a turnoff for people. So if you love wireless charging, don't get this phone because it does not have it. <clears throat> My last thing that I don't like about the phone is the water resistance. Now, there is somewhat water resistance. It's IP64, but on an, any other pretty much flagship phone, you're getting IP67 or IP68, which means it's dust resistant, and you can also submerge it into water. Now, this is dust resistant, but you cannot submerge it into water. At least it's not rated for that. You can It can handle like sprays of water. Um, it can handle the rain, stuff like that. But if you submerge it in water, there's a chance it's going to break break, which if you have kids or you're clumsy with your phone or you like recording underwater videos and things like that, this isn't going to be a good phone to grab for you. All right, so let's now get into the things that I really like about this phone. And to be honest with you, there's even though it's pretty much equal in terms of things I like and don't like, this is definitely a really good buy for a phone. The first of all, this is smooth. When you're getting a OnePlus phone, you're getting super smooth performance. It's really, really great. It, you'll love it for its performance, it's great at gaming, it's great at opening apps and things like that. It's great at 
Again, pretty much anything that you want to do on here, it's going to be super fast. Um, by default, it's not turned on high performance mode. So I noticed that when I ran benchmarks on here, I was getting scores at first akin to like a Snapdragon 8 Gen 1. This has a Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, which is the best processor on the Android side currently. And when you get that performance, uh, when you turn it into high performance mode, then you start seeing performance akin to a Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. But if you notice that, you don't, you're you not getting all that much different performance than using the phone, turn on high performance mode and you should see a different mode. It's in the settings. Just search performance at the top of settings and you'll be able to turn that on. Um, but it will get hot on you more quickly and use more battery life if you have it on high performance mode. Price is crazy on this. So this is the 16 gigs of RAM and 256 gigs of storage. They also have an eight gig of RAM storage, eight gigs of RAM and 128 gigs of storage. That one's 699. This is only 799 for the amount of performance and features that you get in this. It's amazing. It's really, really good deal at that point. So, um, you know, this is a great performing phone. It's, is it the absolute best? No, it's not the absolute best performing phone. It's obviously not the best phone that you can get either. But when you factor in price and performance, it's a really excellent deal. Next up is the kind of portability and holding it in your hand. It's got a 6.7 inch display, but for me, it feels really small. It's really easy and comfortable to hold it in your hand. I don't have big hands. Um, it doesn't feel like an overly large phone. It feels more like a smaller phone, but it's not. It has, you know, these kind of rounded edges around it. And uh, I definitely, definitely like that, that it has all of that. So if you, you know, you really want something that's going to be comfortable in your hand, but kind of a slightly big display, this is a great option. Now, the videos that it takes aren't amazing. They're definitely not amazing. Um, the pictures also aren't blow me away amazing, but they're pretty good. So if you wanted to get some pretty good photos uh, with the OnePlus 11, this is not a bad option. One thing I, I probably could have added to the things I don't like, I don't like how this is off center. I do like how it's usually in the middle because I always forget I'm used to having camera phones that have the camera in the middle. This one is on the left, so sometimes my eyes don't match up with the with the photo that I'm taking, but ultimately you're gonna get uh, some pretty good photos with both of these cameras on the back. Again, videos aren't gonna blow you away, but you should get some decent photos at the very least with these. Think about this, 2023 flagship phone for the most part, and you're getting a charger in the box. How amazing is that? I do wish this cable is a little bit longer, it's pretty short, but to get a amazingly fast charger in the box as well. So that's one of them. The other one is it charges really fast, zero to 100 in 30 minutes for this 80 watt charger, zero to 100 in 30 minutes. I love that. I think that's absolutely amazing for this. Um, other than that, everything else is pretty much like eh, or bad or good. Um, I, that's those are the things that really stood out to me. I thought that they were pretty important. Uh, battery life is okay. I'm not. I'm not personally completely blown away by it. I'm not also hating it either. But um, yeah, I don't know. Overall, it's 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 definitely a phone that like if you bought it, you wouldn't be like, oh man, I really got ripped off. You're not going to feel ripped off at all. It offers a lot of value for the price, and it's really feeling like. It feels like a premium phone, but like the, maybe like the lower end of the premium specter and not the middle or higher end of the premium specter. And it feels a little bit better on the higher end of like a mid-tier phone, if that makes any sense. So check it out. If you want to pick it up, it's linked down below. Thanks for watching. Have a great day and we'll see you down the road. Peace.